hear me? Now can you hear me? Now can you? Oh, no, wrong, wrong commercial. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, introduce you to uh, Florida's largest uh, golf show. And uh, it is uh, truly a pleasure to uh, be up here on stage with, uh, you know, one of the uh, living legends of uh, LPGA golf. Uh, winner of, I think, uh, 72 LPGA tournaments, uh, 89 tournaments uh, nationwide, uh, member of uh, two golf hall of fames, the only woman to ever shoot 59, 59 in competition, Annika Sorensen. <laughs> the question was, uh, do you miss uh, playing competitively? Uh, Oh, uh, no, I, I do not. Um, as you all know, I stepped away from competitive golf about two, two years and maybe three months ago, to be precise. Um, and I have not looked back. I've, I'm staying busy with a lot of different things. I, um, you know, I'm still involved in the game in so many different ways. I have a golf academy just around the corner from here. I build golf courses, um, clothing, I have wine. I do a lot with my foundation. And um, no, I mean, I've got a young little family, so uh, life is good enjoying it and, and, you know, doing a lot of work for the LPGA to either, you know, uh, I'm on the advisory board, I'm on Golf Channel every Thursday, so I'm still involved in the game, so uh, I don't miss com golf competitively. On the other hand, I'm doing some other things I never got to do before, enjoying some of my passions. That is, that's quite a schedule. Uh, and, you know, kind of going on, uh, let's go back to your, your golf game, though. Uh, you know, the 59, 59 is, is just a, a number that is hard for golfers to believe that you could actually score out there. You're the only uh, female pro to shoot a 59. Give us a little insight on how that happened and some of the excitement and uh, what was going on that day. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I mean, I, um, you know, that particular day was March 16th, uh, 2001. I was playing a tournament, an LPJ tournament out in Phoenix, and uh, it was really just an ordinary Friday, but... Uh, Got off to a great start, birdie the first four holes, birdie the first six, birdie the first eight. <laughs> and you can imagine now I'm feeling pretty good, getting a little nervous, but um, you know, par the ninth hole, and then I made the turn at eight under par. So at that particular day, everything felt so, so easy. The cup was so big and everything was just going my way. And uh, on the back nine, made a few birdies and had a chance for 50. Uh, 58 on the last hole, probably eight, wow. nine footer that just slipped by on the left side and pretty much tapped in for a 59. So um, it felt really easy that day. Obviously, I've tried it again. It's been close, but nothing like that. So it's a day that stands out in my career and something I'll never forget. You know, going on into a PGA history, there's been several uh, you know, 59 shot by, by the, the uh, PGA guys, but that was always on the last putt, on the last hole. They didn't have it uh, in the bag, so to speak, at 17. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Thank you. Uh, okay, talking about the PGA. Um, boy, it is a, you know the first time uh, again. I sent uh, what Babe to Arias, uh, where a, a woman had played on the PGA Tour in a men's tournament, and that was a Colonial. And it uh, kind of tell us about that. You know, coming out there, you're kind of representing all the PGA. Uh, I mean, LPGA uh, women and just a, a lot of women all around the world to, to show that you could compete with these guys. Uh, what was the feeling? Well, it's another of those highlights in my career. I mean, really the point was not to to put women against men on a big stage like that. I mean, it was really just for me to, you know, to challenge myself. I wanted to take my game to the next level. You know, I wasn't there to prove anything other than just to learn. But that was in 2003, and um, it was just an amazing week for me to be there and just learn from the best male golfers in the world. and. You know, it was really a true test for me. I was uh, certainly I was very nervous from the from the start to finish. But uh, looking back at the week, I mean, I have so many wonderful memories, so many great people I met, and you know, I look back at my career, and it's just certainly a highlight. So uh, I'm glad I did it. I mean, I did it once, and that's all I needed to do. I I learned what I needed to learn, and and took that on to you know to obviously play on, on the LPJ, and it helped me to win some tournaments over there. I, I know I was watching. And I know a lot of you people were watching that tournament also. And after Annika hit that first drive at Colonial, I remember her taking a couple steps and then just going. Yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> you know, there was so much, you know, momentum built up. It was a lot of nerves. It was a lot of excitement. It was just, uh, I just had to get it out and then I could just play. Get back and, play. And, and she played very well, as a matter of fact. Uh, so you're going into another career here. So you're, uh, 
you're into commentating on the uh, Golf Channel. It's a morning drive uh, program. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very brief, but um, we talk about um, kind of what's current in the golf world. Okay, I'm going to give you a, a question. Uh, we're on morning drive now, and uh, you have these two guys that are shooting questions at you. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's come up. Uh, what do you think about some of the uh, rule situations that have gone in the last year? There's been a lot of controversy on uh, people watching TV, and should that uh, affect a golf tournament? Uh, does it hurt the players who are, are more in the lead because they're on TV more than the players who aren't, who uh, you know, viewer may not see that? Do, do you, what's your thoughts on that? Well, we had that discussion a few weeks ago. I mean, it's like you said, it's something that's uh, kind of current that's happened recently on the PGA Tour. And I mean, I'm always a believer that if you're a player of any level, you should be responsible knowing the rules. So, um, of course, when you're on TV and you, you know, you're playing well in your last few groups, then you might be on camera and people might see things. But I do s still think that you need to know the rules of the game. So, if you have any questions, I mean, we have rules officials, I mean, we have many at each tournament, I mean, just, you know, you can call for them at any time. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, nowadays you play on such a high level that uh, you got to be careful with the rules, but there's no reason for you not to learn them, so um, that's kind of my stand, but it, you know, there's a lot of opinions out there, should, you know, should you be able to call in a day later, and, you know, it's, it's too, to be debatable, but um, I think as a player, you should be responsible knowing the rules. Yeah, I think one of the biggest questions out there now, debating, you know, if you have that, that rules violation that you may may not have known, and you sign a scorecard with a score that's uh, you know, lower than you actually had, you're disqualified from the tournament. So there's some talk now of, of a lesser penalty, maybe just, you know, uh, inflicting the two penalties of that particular violation and after your score, but not, not a DQ. I think that's kind of being weighed out there, or at least being uh, considered. And if you have any rules questions here, uh, I have a good authority from a USGA uh, friend of mine who said that uh, Annika went to a three-day uh, USGA rules uh, seminar back in uh, 1997 or something it, like that? It was a while back, so I could, I could probably need a refresher. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's smart. Most, most pros uh, should do that, but most don't. Most of the, uh, I shouldn't say that, a lot of the, the uh, PGA and LPGA pros really don't know the rules, and it can hurt you or help you. The rules are there uh, to either help you or penalize you when you've made a mistake, so you should know them. You should know them. Um, let's, okay, let's talk about something that is, uh, I know, a passion of Annika's. I'm a, I'm a teaching pro also, and the uh, ability to work with a lot of people and help them with their game is, is, is great. And uh, Annika is well known for her passion for teaching. So tell us a little bit about Annika Academy and uh, how that's going and how, what your ideals are for that. Yeah, um, well, uh, the Annika Academy was... Um you know, been around for almost four years. It's uh, kind of a dream of mine and my coaches. Henry Rice is my swing coach as I was a little girl, and then Kai Fuser, my my fitness girl, you can call him that. Um, when I stepped away, we wanted to continue to work together. We wanted to share our passion for the different uh, aspects of the game that we thought were important to just, you know, golf enthusiasts around the world. So, um, the Annika Academy was built, I'm sure some of you know, it's a reunion resort, which is towards Orlando, but it's really just down on I-4, not too far from here. And you can work with my personal coaches that help me reach my full potential and help me get to the top and stay at the top. And, you know, we're not just about, you know, the grip. We're not just about, you know, lifting weights. It's really more the holistic approach to the game, which I think is very important. Nutrition matters. Course management matters. Uh, club fit matters. I mean, it's... You can have, you know, you can be very good on the range, but you have to put all the pieces together. So, what we feel like we do, we, we put together one of a kind experiences in a small groups, and uh, like I said, with my coaches. Uh, but you can also um, play golf with me. I do clinics. I have lunch. We do a lot of different things. So, um, we have a booth right here, down on the left. This is Annika Academy. If you have any questions, um, Michelle McGee is director of sales. She's over there. If you have any questions, talk to her. Um, she's uh, also my husband's sister. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no pressure on her, but uh, she would love to see you and talk about uh, what we can share with you. No, and I've been to a, you know, a lot of you know golf schools, golf caddies around the country, around the world, and uh, Annika's is, is probably the finest. If you're out that way, out to reunion, uh, highly recommend you stop in. Uh, they have all kind of programs. Uh, she has uh, probably some of the best uh, junior girls in in Florida working with her and working at the academy. Uh, it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, facility. Thank you, Pat.
Uh, you know, talking about you know other things you're doing in uh, you know in your you know, nowadays, uh, you have the Annika Foundation, okay? And I know a lot of good things are uh, are being done there. You might want to give us a little insight on, on what some of the programs are. Sure. Yeah, um, the Annika Foundation was was created recently, but it's something I've been involved with for many years. Um, it's all about giving back to to the game to junior girls, give them the opportunity to pursue their dreams. So I've done that through scholarships. We do a golf tournament every year at Reunion. We host the top 72 girls in the world from all these different countries. And um, I just want these girls to have a chance to follow their dreams. And, uh, you know, girls nowadays need a little push. They need a little, you know, a little carrot for them to, to play the game, but also sustain the game. But something that I'm also passionate about is, is food and health, how to eat right, how to be active. And uh, I'm sure most of you had children here, you're aware that some of the things that's happening in school days nowadays, it's, they're taking away physical education. And the obesity rate in this country is higher than it's ever been. As a matter of fact, some statistics say that this new generation, they will not live as long as our generation, which to me is pretty scary. With all the things that we're capable of doing, we're now reversing the life expectancy. So. And, uh, you know, so that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to find obesity. We're trying to make sure that we have physical education in schools. Just make sure that these kids are active. I mean, it doesn't have to be golf, but it could be anything. It could be soccer. It could just be outside, jumping a rope, getting on a bike. Just anything for these kids to be active. So that's really what the Annika Foundation is about. We have partnered with different organizations around the country to really spread the word. I'm sure most of you know that Michelle Obama is involved in an initiative called Let's Move. So people are starting to understand that we have to reverse this obesity trend in this country because a third of kids today are now obese, a third. So if we don't do anything today, we're going to half of this country be obese and that's just going to cost us more. So that's really one of the things I'm doing with the foundation. It's, it's, um, it's inspiring to, to help these kids that might not know better. But uh, we've had some kids and some programs going through Florida Hospital and just within six months they have lost weight the attitudes are better. Um, they have some of these kids have diabetes. Some of these kids have high blood pressure. We're talking kids here. We're not talking, you know, us adults. We're talking these kids, and it's just going to get worse. So, those are some of the things that we're doing, and it's um, it's very rewarding. So, um, I'm very happy to be involved in something that I really care about. That sounds like a great program. Uh, let's talk about your, uh, you know, carrying your your golf skills and abilities over to, to other areas. Uh, Course, uh, course design is a big part of your, your time now, right? And you have some courses under construction? I do, yeah. I'm wow. working on my 10th golf course. Um, I've been lucky to do that, and mostly in Asia. I mean, we all know that golf has kind of been hit in this country and in a lot of other countries in, on the West, but um, in Asia it has not. Golf is still growing like crazy. China is a big area. Uh, Malaysia is another one. And um, I, I enjoy that business. It's fun. It's, it's it's a great way for me to be a little bit more, I would just say, more creative. You know, when you go on a golf course, you, you already stay on the first tee. You see the fairway, you see the greens, you see the bunker, everything is lined up. But you go to an untouched area and you start to visualize a golf course. It's, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I, I love the process. And um, a question that I get a lot is, are you designing a course for women? And I said, no, I'm not designing a course for women. I'm designing a course for, for golfers. Uh, but we do have a lot of tees. I think it's important to have a, to build a course where anybody of any level can play. I mean, not everybody is a professional golfer, not everybody is a beginner, but tees so that everybody can enjoy the game. You know, kind of jumping in, your your first uh, LPGA win was a major at the Broadmoor in uh, Colorado Springs. That came early on in your career. Was that, uh, I mean, how did you peak for that? How did you get prepared to win a major? Well, I think that this kind of happened. Um, you know, when you starting out, you, you really don't know what, what to expect. And when I joined the tour, I didn't know if I could win a single tournament. So it really took me by surprise. Um, after that, I mean, I got the confidence and I played really well after that. Um, but during that particular tournament, I was just very, I mean, I was very patient. I looked a little bit at the leaderboards, but I, I really didn't go in there thinking I could win. So I was, just, you know, certainly an underdog and just climbed up the leaderboard and then on Sunday happened to be at the top. And the rest is history. Yes. <laughs> okay, why don't uh, I'm gonna let Annika sit down here and rest a little bit. And if you uh, want to get some autographs, 
why don't we just kind of you know follow through here, then I can hand them to her rather than uh, her standing up and uh, just come right in front here if you would. Okay. 